In 1870, as newspaper editors and indignant reformers began questioning where Tweed's lavish lifestyle came from, all eyes turned to the still unfinished county courthouse on Chambers Street, a special project of Tweed's. Begun in 1858, it was supposed to have cost $350,000. Twelve years later, the price tag had reached 13 million and kept right on rising. Somewhere on this one building, which is actually quite a nice building, um, wound up costing more than the entire Houses of Parliament. Uh, well, you know, the deal is straightforward. You, we want to buy a lot of chairs. How much does that chair cost? Uh, let's say $5. Now, says Tweed, you don't mean $5, you mean $50. Oh, I do? All right. And, you know, give me the chair, $50, you know, 20 back for you, and so forth. Even the most worldly New Yorkers knew that something had to be done. People begin to tire of holding their noses, George Templeton Strong wrote, and are looking about in a helpless way for some remedy. No caliph, Khan, or Caesar has risen to power or opulence more rapidly than Tweed I. Ten years ago, this monarch was pursuing the humble occupation of a chairmaker. He now rules the state as Napoleon ruled France. There is absolutely nothing, nothing in the city which is beyond the reach of the insatiable gang who have obtained possession of it. The New York Times. In 1869, a German-born artist named Thomas Nast, with close ties to the Republican Party, began publishing a series of political cartoons in Harper's Weekly. Week after week, Nast relentlessly excoriated what he called the Tammany Hall Ring. There was Peter Brains Sweeney, the city treasurer. Mayor Abraham Oakey Hall, Tweed's puppet in City Hall. Richard Slippery Dick Conley, the comptroller. And boss Tweed himself, whom Nast depicted as a licentious, balding, overfed monster, literally devouring the city. I don't care a straw for newspaper articles, Tweed declared. My constituents don't know how to read. But they can't help seeing them damned pictures. He was the object of one of the most successful campaigns by a political cartoonist in history. Thomas Nast really did the most extraordinary job of attacking Tweed and exposing the Tweed ring in Harper's Weekly. Those pictures will live forever. The way you can never separate Nixon from Woodward and Bernstein, you can't separate Tweed from Thomas Nast. They're wed together for, for the rest of history, I guess. On July 8th, 1871, the New York Times joined the fray, publishing excerpts from secret courthouse records obtained from a disgruntled city official. Tweed had cheated out of thousands of dollars in kickbacks. The figures were astonishing. 11 thermometers had been purchased for $7,500. Dust brooms for $41,000. One contractor had been paid $5.5 million for window shades, carpets, and furniture. It would never be clear how much Tweed's corruption had been exaggerated by the press. The New York Times put the final tally at almost $200 million. But in the end, it didn't matter. New York needed a villain equal in scale to its giant park and giant bridge. And Tweed fit the bill, in part because he simply looked the part.